Good morning, CCSP. Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. It is a period six to 10 day. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, boys and girls, today we have a lot of cool things going on. It is actually March 2nd, which means it's Dr. Seuss's birthday. And for us to celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday today, it's wear your funky hat day. So there are a lot of things that I wanna share with you today. Um, we are in our second day of returning to hybrid instruction. And hopefully things are going very smoothly for you. I do wanna remind you though, that you need to make sure that when you come to school, you have a charged computer device. If you're finding that your computer isn't holding a charge very good, or very long, then make sure you bring your charger as well. Also make sure you bring your headphones, very important because there are going to be uh, possibly some different things going on in your classroom and you need to be able to tune in to your class. So you need to have those headphones on. So computer device and headphones and make sure it's charged or bring your charger along. Also, um, sometime this week, we are going, those of us who are going, coming on campus, you will be participating in a bus evacuation drill. And we're going to talk a little more about that a little later. But I know yesterday you had an opportunity to hear Mrs. Stratton read some more of Bluish. Oh, also, in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday and Read Across America Week, you're going to be able to participate in several guest readers today. There are going to be individuals uh, recording their readings for you, and also maybe some live readers might drop into your class from time to time to celebrate. Because as you know, Dr. Seuss and Read Across America Week is a celebration of reading. And we are trying to encourage you to develop that love of reading and expose you to as many cool stories as we possibly can. So let's get started. What's next in bluish? So Drini didn't understand. Sorry, Natalie then, she felt embarrassed. Forget it, Bluish said. Because if you remember, Drini went to call uh, Bluish Bluish and Bluish reminded her that her mom doesn't really like when people call her Bluish. So instead, you know, you should call her Natalie, which is her name. It hadn't taken them long to plan their project. Max read their agreement and gave it an okay. Afterward, Bluish wheeled up to one of the big tables with Lucky on the floor beside her. He looked up at her eagerly and jumped around whenever a kid got up, but he didn't stray far from Bluish's side. She gave him tidbits and he had a little bone he chewed on. Bluish cut paper and made a sign, rolled over to the decorated tree and taped the sign to one of the branches. It read Hanukkah bush. In black marker, Miss Baker watched Bluish made, but made no comment. Kids like Dreamy, who saw Bluish go up to the tree, didn't say anything either. Bluish made a second sign. She wound string around two paper clips. She clipped them to the sign and put the sign around her neck. The letters were squiggly, not as bold as on the other sign. I was born a human. I'm named Natalie. Underneath that were tiny printed words but you can call me Bluish. Dreamy braced herself when Bluish came toward her. 
Blue struggled now to turn the wheels. That's what you mean, right? Panting, she said to Drini. Because of my coloring, she pointed to the sign's tiny letters. I'd take the E out, Drini said. It's bluish without the E. Oh, okay, bluish said. You fix it. Drini got a marker and crossed out the E. There, B-L-U-I-S-H. Okay, she barely said, said barely above a whisper. We've gotten used to her, sort of. Drini was thinking, each day with her around is different. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. What a freaky kid. You can tell she's been sick bad, maybe a long time. And you can't help feeling sorry for her. Still, Bluish was like nothing Drini had ever seen. When she got an upset stomach, as she sometimes did, Drini didn't want to be around her. Every kid got anxious when it happened. Some kids said there was an odor around her and her chair, like medicine. One time, a kid said, hey, girl, you smell like the clinic. And Bluish said right back, airhead, your pea brain's crawling out the door. The kid, it had been Kevin Smith, didn't know what to make of her. Most kids didn't. She always had something peculiar to say back when a kid was nosy or dumb acting. About a half an hour before lunch, Thule had gotten bored and was chica chica up and down the room. She stopped by Bluish, who was reading a book from the bookcase. What's them things you've got there in your lap next to the doggy? She asked. Bluish answered, you want one? One what? They're fitted hats to come down low on your head, Bluish said. It's what I wear. Why? Tully asked. Cause that's why. Bluish sounded hoarse. She had talked more today than usual. Dreeny realized. Bluish handed Tully a hat out of a small plastic bag. Oh, Tully said, and she put it on. The hat was knitted in blue and gold with a purple background. I got too much hair. Hmm, I think I might like that hat with the purple background. No, you don't, Bluish told her. Her little voice squeaked almost to losing it. She took another hat from the plastic bag and held it out to Dreamy. Really? I get to wear it? Dreamy asked. I made it for you. You can have it. Dreamy couldn't believe it. That's so nice, she said. Thank you. They were talking quietly, not to cause too much attention but other kids saw and came over and hung around like they wanted a hat too, until Max asked if they had finished their work. Bluish watched in the frowning way she had as Drini tried on her hat. Drini thought it was beautiful, the prettiest one of all. It had a gold background. It had a sh red stripe and a spring green one. It looks like Christmas, Drini said. She stuffed her hair under and pulled the hat low over her ears. Bluish nodded okay. There was a mirror on the closet door. Drini and Tully looked at themselves. I got too much hair, Tully said. It don't look right on me, but she was admiring herself. You don't have to pull, put it all, put all that hair under it, Drini told her. Just let it out. Bluish wants us to wear them, she whispered. Okay, I get it, Tully whispered back, but it don't look right on me. In the mirror, Bluish was there with them. She'd come up from behind. Drini laughed. She hadn't expected to see her. Drini and Tully stood still, looking at themselves at the hats and Bluish in her hat. We look way cool, Bluish murmured. Tully pulled her hair down from under the hat. Her curls sprang around as if they had a life of their own. I am the baddest. I kid you not, Tully said. She is the silliest, no doubt about it, Drini said, thought. It was then that she realized Bluish was standing, the same as they were. Bluish, Drini exclaimed. Something bright and alive suddenly drained from Bluish's eyes. She turned away. That quickly, her mood had changed. She took a paperback off the bookshelf. A minute later, she shakily put it back. She was hobbling now, as if her legs wouldn't hold her. She went over to study the big dictionary, which was always in place at the end of one of the tables. When she got up five minutes later, it took her a long time. She made her way to her chair, holding on to things. There she rested with Lucky in her lap, turned in the chair looking for Miss Baker. 
There were strings of saliva hanging out of her mouth. Miss Baker saw her. Come, came to her. Call my mom, Lewis whispered, please. Miss Baker gave her tissues for her mouth. Then she said something to Max and he left the room. Lewis closed her eyes, held the tissues to her lips. Go about your business, Miss Baker told them. Then Bluish fell asleep. The class made more noise shushing one another than if they just stayed quiet. That was what Miss Baker told them. Max came back and wheeled Bluish away. Wow. I wonder what happened to Bluish. You think that she's getting sick again? Hmm. Guess we'll have to tune in on Thursday and see what Miss Stratton says. Now, like I told you before, a little earlier, sometime this week, we're going to be having a bus evacuation drill. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to please tune in to this video. orderly and respectful emergency evacuation. Rear door evacuation. I have an emergency situation. I have smoke coming under, out from under my hood. We are going to be evacuating out the rear door. Would you know what to do? My helper's in the back. Open the back door. Sit down and scoot out. And stand at the rear of the door. During a rear door evacuation, there are three helpers, two door helpers and one line leader to lead students 100 feet away from the bus. Students will exit back to front. This means beginning typically with seat 24, then 23, 22, 21, etc. Watch closely as the students continue alternating seat by seat evacuation from the back to the front. Notice the students who are seated towards the front of the bus and awaiting their evacuation are seated correctly. They are not standing in the aisle. Remember, a clear aisle ensures a safe, orderly, and respectful evacuation. Once the last student has been evacuated safely from the school bus, the driver will then perform an inspection to make sure that no students have been left behind. This will complete the safe rear door evacuation. The end. Now, remember, with any emergency drill, the most important thing is that you stay quiet and listen for instructions and make sure that you're following those instructions. So please stay tuned for more directions and more information concerning the emergency bus evacuation drill. Also, as you can see, I'm wearing my funky hat today. And Thursday is wear something cool from a place that you've had the opportunity to visit. So think about Dr. Seuss and all the places you can go. Well, CCSP, have a terrific Tuesday. And remember, be kind always.